Good afternoon and a very warm welcome back to Ljubljana in Slovenia for the ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup Race 3 here in the sunshine overlooking this majestic river Sava with crystal clear waters ready to anticipate a great final underway because we've got the women's C1, the women's canoe singles competition up first and then the men's kayak singles up second up. So the racing has been really tight this morning, particularly in the men's kayak singles. Just three seconds separated the uh, competitors in that top 10 who go through into the finals. So a big Slovenian crowd here alongside the Tarsen Whitewater course, anticipating the action here in the final. 22 gates stand between them and a place on the podium, our athletes. Perfect weather conditions, 25 degrees, perfect blue skies here in the uh, amphitheater that is this Tartsen White Water Course. And uh, we are eagerly anticipating the start of the competition. 200 athletes started this uh, competition across the four categories from over 30 countries. And we're now down into the sharp end of racing and it's finals time. There, Claire Jacquet of France leading the World Cup standings after the first two races. But uh, Claire not racing here. Neither is Andre uh, Herzog of Germany in second. So Jessica Fox, who qualified through into this final, likely to take that uh, race lead in the overall standings. But here is the start list for the women's canoe singles final. Ten boats racing in reverse order of their performance in the semi-final. So Ana Shatila of Brazil, fastest in the semi-final, goes off last. My name is uh, Andy Maddock and alongside me, Thomas Kirklin of Switzerland. And between us, we will bring you all the action as it unfolds. Welcome back, Thomas. Hey. Hey, everyone. So here's the, uh, some of the statistics, really, showing where the uh, challenges are on this uh, 22 gate course and we know that gate five six and seven is a crucial move particularly in this women's c1 event yeah uh, absolutely and uh, i think uh, we'll have uh, <coughs> the show beginning right now with uh, julia schmidt from hungary so here we get underway with the racing 10 boats racing it out it's, everyone starts from zero and it's all about delivery in this final to take the World Cup gold. Yesterday, the Italians dominated. So Roberto Colasingari took the gold in the men's C1, as did Stephanie Horn of Italy. So who will it gonna be? Well, no Italian representation in this women's C1 final, but we do have Italian representation in the men's K1 final. And so far, well, uh, this is potentially a good tactical start for Julia Schmidt of Hungary on gate five. Yeah, she's a pretty uh, experienced uh, paddler and um, she used to, to paddle for um, Austria, I think. And um, yeah, she had a pretty hard beginning. Uh, she fell into the hole on the first drop and and had some troubles uh, then uh, to get to the second stream gate. But now she's finding his, her rhythm and uh, it's pretty okay for now. Yeah, so she was a, a, world, a European Championship medalist on two occasions in 2013 and 2014. And uh, 30th last weekend in Bratislava. And we know with this women's C1 competition from the semi-finals, there was a big spread of times. But if someone finds the rhythm, they can really put a challenge on those still to come yeah absolutely and um, I think she didn't find it from in the first uh, part of the course but now uh, it's very well done here she's a bit low but it's no problem and uh, she will feel it strong so 22 gates is the course the six of the gates red and white it have to be negotiated in an upstream direction the rest in a downstream direction and Julia Schmidt of Hungary now finishing her run. Uh, a late penalty there on gate 21, now confirmed. And, well, a total time of, well, 176.32, a 50-second penalty picked up on the last gate. Oh, that's a shame. That could be a, a place in the top fifth, maybe, but uh, with the 50-second penalty, I think it will be far away. So, uh, Julia Schmidt, unfortunately, 
problems at the bottom of the course and uh, she doesn't really set the pace for the others still to follow and as an indication of that pace then the fastest raw time on the, the semi-finals was 105.59 that was Anna Shatila huge, yeah. and uh, well what do you think Thomas do you think we're going to go under 100 seconds here I think uh, 105 is already a very good uh, time and uh, I think if uh, the girls uh, get close to that uh, it will be very well, very well done. Yes, I think you're right. I think anything under 110 is probably uh, podium kind of material. Yeah. And uh, well, let's see next because it's uh, Margot Henri of France who is on course. Young, young uh, development paddler for the French team. Already in a little bit of problems there. Took a big hit on the... Uh, the big hole at the bottom of the top drop, but has recovered. It's just whether she's recovered her composure. Yeah, that's important. And uh, the, the, her mistake was the same as Julia just before. Uh, she couldn't reach the, the right side of the of the big drop, and then she fell in the middle of the big hole, and uh, that's a big loss of time. So and now, yeah, she's going in the other side of the river uh, to secure the, the rest of the section. So I think there'll be a bit of learning between the semi-finals and the finals in the, uh, well, what, probably a couple of hours between those runs because in the semi-finals the athletes hadn't had a chance to practice on the course and then clearly they now have a run in the bank. And, uh, well, Margot Henri is in touch with Julia Schmidt on the top part of the course. Wow. And here she goes a uh, lot uh, on the upside of the river to secure the, <laughs> the gate right after, which is in the stopper, which is pretty hard to, to go through. But she's having a lot of trouble. She, yeah, she didn't manage to do what she wanted, obviously. So a bit of a challenge there, and the penalties mounting up. Six seconds of penalties currently showing on the. Uh, on the course now as she comes down through gate 16 and uh, well already a drift of Julia Schmidt well we do know that Julia Schmidt picks up a 50 second penalty on the bottom part of the course but uh, we know that uh, somewhere around about the 110 seconds is kind of where you need to be if you want to be on the podium here this afternoon yeah that's it and uh, I think uh, what will be important is that final for the girls is like padding the way they, they know and not just to try to avoid mistakes, you know. And uh, that's, I think that's what we have seen right now with Julia and, and uh, Margot. She, they wanted to secure a good place in the final, but they don't really paddle and, and throw everything they had. So into second place because Julia Schmidt has had that penalty removed. So uh, Julia Schmidt leading for Hungary, 126.32. Margot Henri of France in second place at this stage in the competition but still obviously the fastest eight boats from the semi-finals still to come okay. wow. great slow-mo shots here of the top drop the famous top drop here in Tartsen in Slovenia and there that's Margot Henri great recovery the weather is pretty hot the today eh? so maybe she wanted a bit of fresh water <laughs> So next up, another French athlete. It's Ella Bregazzi representing France, 22 years of age and in her first ever World Cup final. And just a little bit low. She had the good line, but hesitated a moment. Yeah, I think that's it, yeah. She hesitated and she didn't want it to go straight to the gate, probably. Well, let's watch now. She uses the water and yeah. again a little bit low. Yeah, 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 I've seen her eyes and she was looking from the top uh, from very low and the upstream gate and she really wants to secure her run but I think that can be costly in terms of time. So safely through five, six and seven with that uh, conservative spin option above gate five and uh, certainly judging by the number of people that were caught out in the semi-finals I, I suspect there'll be a few people doing that yeah that's true and i love the way she she went uh, between the two blocks that was very smooth very gliding and uh, right here she's doing well as well yeah and so she was 3.6 seconds up on the early split time wow that's over good. julia schmidt of hungary so if she can build on that which she looks like she's doing yeah. through this section then that'll be important uh. Oh, push, keep pushing, you'll make it. Oh. A big loss of time right here. 
she get uh, pushed on the right side of the river on that uh, green gate, but she's still up on the split. So still up on the split, but that's uh, the time, 1.26. If she wants to be in with a shout of a podium on her first World Cup final, she probably needs to be taking more off that uh, split time. So Ella Bragazzi now coming into the final upstream gate, gate 19. That's, uh, there we watch Julia Schmidt in the orange helmet, the current race leader for Hungary, looking, watching eagerly to see whether she's done enough. Ella Bergazzi of France is going to take the race lead. 6.21, so she's found some time on the bottom yeah. section, and it's a respectable time in her first final. 1-2-0.11, uh, but the door still wide open. Yeah, I love the way she finished her run. It was very smooth. She keeps pushing and trying to, to have the best line, to have some speed, and that was well done. <laughs> nice switching. Girls are picking very good at that game. So, yes, uh, Thomas there mentioning the switching. These women C1 really pioneering the switching of the blades to optimize their lines. And a lot of the men C1 are, are starting to copy, or at least to experiment. Yeah, that's it. Yet more and more, and more guys are are doing the same and uh, I think it's improving uh, the discipline. Here comes the local. So, yeah, two, seven nations represented in this 10-boat final and two Slovenians racing and the first one is on course now. It's Alia Kozarov and, uh, yeah, Thomas gives his Amazing. warp of approval. She's nailed the top section. Yes, that was very, very smooth and very well done. And here I expect the same stuff. Boom! Ah, almost. Well, it's a quick switch, and uh, she's not lost much time there. Yep. Now she needs to get this move through five to six sorted. Again, spinning above five so you can line up through the move. And, uh, well, you could say a scrappy touch there on gate six. Yeah, but she's moving very, very fast. And, uh, wow, look at that. Using all the power of the river, and uh, I love it. Well, she is up, and the crowd here are making a lot of noise. Big Ooh. expectation after two silver medals, and really, really tight into the upstream wow, ten. That was done, like surfing and jumping to the upstream gate, and here gliding so much, going up to, to secure the, the next uh, move, and that's very, very well done. Wow, look at this. She's, she's gliding so well and spinning. Wow, and look at the speed she got when she, she goes to the next one. Wow. Well, here she comes, and eight and a half seconds up on the split. This is a really good run coming together from Alia Kozarov of Slovenia. As she comes into the upstream 18, it's good. She's it gets, it. Done. it gets the seal of approval from Thomas. Yep, and she's very pushed with her own crowd, and it's great to see it. Wow. This event, of course, will make its debut in the Tokyo Olympic Games next year and Alia Kozarog is racing into the lead 112.55 and uh, well that is a good performance and that is going to contend in the margin I think for a medal yeah I think yeah it will be three or four spies I would say uh, that's I think uh, she can be proud of herself it's not always easy to to deliver a good performance at home uh, you are not used to, to hearing so much voices and to have uh, probably your, your family there and a lot of people you know and uh, I think she, she did a very good uh, paddling today. Well, into first place, Alia Kozarov of Slovenia, ahead of Ella Bragazzi of France, Julia Schmidt of Hungary and Margot Henri of France at the moment. Four boats down. Six boats still to come in this uh, World Cup final here in the sunshine in Slovenia. And, uh, well, you can hear the crowd winding up again because we have another Slovenian paddler. And it is Eva Alina Hocheva, just out of juniors, and uh, very much showing her composure and her experience in this senior forum. Wow. That's huge. That's huge to be in a final at home at her age. Uh, sh I think she will uh, she will enjoy very much. Yeah, well, she has actually made it into the final before last year, but last year was a bit different because 
Unfortunately, the semi-finals and finals were cancelled because yep. of flooding. No risk of that today, that's for sure. As uh, Eva Alina Horcheva now needs to keep the momentum going. And, oh, very close to uh, finding the right line through that move. Yeah. But a bit of a paddle back, and uh, it, it will cost her on the clock, but no penalties at the moment. Or oh, just one on gate six. Um, yeah, she, I think she wanted to go direct to the spin, but she, she couldn't handle the boat, and uh, the boat went on the left side of the river, unfortunately. And uh, she's really lost the flow of the boat. She needs to uh, get the uh, boat back on track, keep her working her way down this course, and uh, again, a little bit of time trading hands there, dropping low on 10. Yeah, yeah, she has, uh, she's having some trouble, but this l and all the crowd is, is helping her so much, and it's, it's a lovely moment. Yeah, it's great to see the Slovenian crowd. You always get a very warm welcome here in Slovenia, and I know the uh, crowd today is swelled by the uh, Peter Kauser, the Kauser army of supporters, and Peter Kauser will go in the men's K1 final after this. So, he... Eva Alina Hochevar now in and out to the upstream 18. And, uh, well, it's a good time, respectable, bearing in mind she's straight out of juniors, then it's uh, a respectable time under pressure in front of her home crowd. It's going to be outside of the top three. Might just sneak into third place. We'll have to wait and see. She does just into third place, but it is her compatriot, Alia Kozorov of Slovenia, who leads at the halfway point in this women's C1 final. There you see the crowd going wild. And uh, Eva Alina Hochevar into third place. So uh, here we see the top part of the course. And uh, well, we'll have the opportunity to talk to our race leader at the halfway point in just a moment. Well, Ayla, here you are, your second World Cup final ever, and now you're in the lead after five, five uh, athletes. How do you feel? Um, I feel so happy that I uh, managed to do a good run. I had two touches, and maybe there will be a deal breaker, but I am so happy that I finally did a good final run. Tell me about the crowd today. It's such a big crowd, and they're so loud. Could you hear them? Yeah, I could all the way. It's the first time this happened to me, and... Uh, it's really nice, but also really scary. <laughs> but yeah, it's so nice that a lot of people are interested in this sport. Well done, congratulations. Hold on to it. Well, great to see that uh, Alia Kozorok there, our race leader at the halfway point there. 112.55. Still some big names to come. Thomas, what are you thinking? Uh, is that going to stand the test of time for the gold medal? No, no, I'm... Sorry for Alja, but I think it won't be a gold medal. We get uh, Jessica Fox, Anna Satila, and uh, Victoria Wolfhart, who are very experimented paddler. Uh, Rosalina as well, and maybe the young gun, Evely Fat. And um, I think uh, it could be a podium, but uh, we'll see what happens. Well, we won't have too much longer to wait, but as you say, Thomas, we have some big names, including Jessica Fox, the world champion, World Cup champion of 2018, still to come in this World Cup final. It's a great sight here in the sunshine. Everyone's having a great day. And uh, well, the Italians having a particularly good competition so far, but certainly the Slovenians at the moment, they got two silvers yesterday yeah, and they're uh, well placed for a medal today but well is victoria volfart of austria going to spoil that slovenian party she's the european champion from 2018 very accomplished young paddler now she launches her campaign down the course <clears throat> yeah i think she will uh, she will take many risks and she will uh, try to to go direct at, this, at the next uh, move, and uh, she's starting very well with a very well done upstream gate. 
Well, she struggled on that move in the semi-final, but no problem there. And she struggled here. She was low into four here in the semi-final. So she's clearly done some homework between the runs. And uh, what are we going to see here? She takes on the move and she delivers it. Amazing. Well, yeah. Victoria Wolfhardt of Austria must be slightly breathing a sigh of relief having delivered the top part of the course. Yeah, now she, she needs to continue pushing. Uh, she's, uh, wow, 7.48 seconds up. It's crazy. So the opportunity now Woo. is into the upstream 10 tight. Victoria Wolfhardt is having the run that she had hoped for. Now, this is where she needs yeah. to keep the focus. It's easy to pick up a couple of penalties That's down true. here. And here is that with the bubble part, especially hard to keep the line, and she's doing very well. Let's have a look at her spin. Woo! Well, Wolfhard right. of Austria now has, uh, well, it's been trimmed a little bit, the advantage, but still nearly seven seconds up on the race leader, Alia Koronosorog of Slovenia. So into the upstream gate she goes and tidily through there. Just uh, four more gates to negotiate now. Yeah, and she's nailing both of them. It's crazy, both of the two upstream gates. And she's having the, the run, I think, exactly the one she wanted. Well, this is going to be great because this is going to put the pressure on those still to come because it's an outstanding run from Victoria Volfar of Austria. 104.22, boom, into the race lead. And understandably, she is smiling. She knows she's gone faster than anyone managed in the semi-finals. And, uh, wow, she has lit up this race. Well, I'm delighted. I really enjoyed watching her run. And um, it's going to put, as you say, a lot of pressure on the next competitors. And uh, I think uh, we'll have a good end of finals. So that's where Victoria really won that, that uh, time, really. 104.22. She delivered that tricky fifth, six, seven gate, and uh, she attacked it. She didn't take any chances. She didn't go conservative. She went all out, and it yeah. worked for her. That's the way to do it. Well, Victoria Wolfhardt with, from Austria surely is guaranteed a medal with that, but uh, yeah. she's certainly sitting comfortably close to a gold medal at this point in time. Victoria Wolfhardt leads ahead of Alia Kozarog of Slovenia and Ella Bregazzi of France with four boats to go. And uh, next up for Australia, two-time World Cup Series winner, but uh, also World Championship finalist last year in this competition. Ooh. But Rosalind Lawrence yeah, is in she, trouble already. She was in the middle of the hole, and unfortunately, she's going to go down and no way to finish her run properly. Oh, that's a huge disappointment for Rosalind oh Lawrence. And uh, particularly, as she's had a disappointing start to the season. 22nd in Lee Valley at the first World Cup of the season. 38th last week. And uh, she made the final, so that was a good performance. But uh, it's not going to be today. But great to see Roz uh, showing us her skills. And she's absolutely committing to the rest of the run. Yeah, and that's uh, very sad because she absolutely made uh, it's a very hard part of the course, uh, gate 4, 5, 6. Uh, that was extremely smooth, and uh, for now she's going pretty fast. Or maybe it's, yeah, it's too much to carry with those two big penalties, and now she has trouble to finish. But. Well, we have uh, three boats still to uh, to start this competition, and uh, included in that is a 15-year-old in only her second World Cup race of her career. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing. Evie Leapfarth of the United States of America going against the, uh, well, one of the most decorated world championship paddlers in the sport of canoe slalom's history, Jessica Fox. So it'll be the uh, inexperienced against the inexperienced yeah, for those so uh, final places in this final. But Rosalind Lawrence of Australia has, uh, well, put that big mistake on the top part of the course behind her. It's not going to help her in this final and uh, into seventh place for Rosalind Lawrence. I'm sure we'll see her very much back in action. Of course, the World Cup Series comes to uh, Magdeburg in Germany at the end of August, and then uh, Prague for the World Cup final in uh, the beginning of September, ahead of the ICF World Championships at the end of September in La Seo de Real in Spain.
Here we see Rosalyn Lawrence. Yeah. Never Get quite that. got the bows round. Yeah. A little bit late and, and yeah. uh, shook a big hit in the hole. Whoa. And once you get stuck into the middle of the hole, it's yeah, it's over. You just have to to pray, not to get your your head upside down. Yeah, and in some ways, when someone has a, a big mistake like that, it, it it is good for everyone to see just how hard it is and how powerful the white water is, yeah. uh, because sometimes the athletes make it look very easy. <laughs> That's true. So three boats still to go in this women's C1 final. And here is the young 15-year-old from the United States of America in her second World Cup race. And again, in the final, she was third fastest in the semi-finals. It's Evie Liebfahrt. No problem. She's so light, so she didn't get stuck. Uh, yeah, and she was in a very bad shape, though. So she lost a bit of time on the top there, but uh, she has a very attacking style. It'll be interesting to see whether she takes a really attacking stance on the move into the downstream gate five. Yeah, it's crazy. This kid is breaking all the rules I know about Canoe Slalom. You know, sometimes I think, yeah, how, how it is even possible? It's crazy. And she's probably, she would probably be uh, very close on the speed. Well, respect Evie Leapfrath of the United States of America. She has picked up a two second penalty on gate six, but that is an outstanding top section for the 15 year old yeah. and yes it's a little bit wow. down on the split but uh, Victoria Volfart had an outstanding section of uh, performance so this could still contend for sure, a place sure. on the podium wow and uh, yeah she's still doing great and using her uh, her strength which are uh, a lot of uh, paddling and uh, very light uh, yeah very light light well, here she comes at six and a half seconds down. Well, if she can uh, hold on to that, then that would put her into second spot. And, uh, yeah. and uh, with only two great. votes to go. Nice. Nicely done. And certainly, she's so mature for her age in terms sure. of that mental skill. The expectation on her uh, must be, uh, well, she's clearly dealing with it well. Well, yeah, coming down now towards the finish line effectively to get second place she's outside of first place 112.55 is the time she's got to beat she's inside that wow. and Evie Leapfarth of the United States of America goes into second is guaranteed a top four finish for yeah and for a first uh, second world cup it's just crazy eh? well great performance there from Evie Leapfarth of the United States of America taking second place but Victoria Volfart now knows she's got a medal for Austria it's just what color will that be two boats still to go in this the women's C1 final here in Slovenia Wow I'm impressed she'll probably pick up a medal which is huge for a second World Cup and she had all uh, all races she, she did, she I think she was in the final. That's right. Yeah. She in, last weekend was her first World Cup. She made the final in both the canoe and the kayak, and the same again uh, in this competition. So huge, outstanding. Well, here is the experienced four-time world champion, World Cup winner last year, Jessica Fox of Australia. Hasn't quite found the groove this season compared to normal she won a bronze medal in lee valley in the first world cup race missed the final was 11th in bratislava but it's a good start for jessica fox yeah i think uh, it's pretty hard when you won everything to to keep uh, being hungry you know and uh, but uh, what she's doing is already pretty huge and uh, it's what? still a bronze medal last week well, let's have a look because uh, Jessica Fox now coming through the top section into the upstream gate eight and uh, she has picked up a two second penalty, but she's on the pace. Just one and a half down on Victoria, full part of Austria. It's yeah. great to see Jess finding her rhythm. She didn't seem to find that so much in the semi-final, but it, she's on it now, isn't she? Wow. Yeah, she's totally, totally in her, in her paddling right now. Look at this. Wow. That's huge. Uh, she has picked up another two-second penalty oh, on the downstream gate nine. 
it's going to be costly, but right here it was, it's, it's very fast as well. And look at that, two and a half seconds down. So she is down on race leader, full fart of Austria. Wow. And it's gliding so much, and she, with her uh, strength, I'm sure she can, uh, she can improve on the last part. Well, let's watch, because uh, yeah, she might still find a little bit of time. Will it be enough to challenge for the race lead? I'm starting to think that it may not be. But it's going to be tight as she comes so to the finish line. It is going to be the race lead, surely. Jessica Fox of Australia Ooh. does find that time. 103.06, and that includes four seconds of penalties. That's so yeah. Well, respect there. Great to see Jessica Fox of Australia putting one down there in this final. And, uh, well, that's a time of 99.06 seconds. And she goes ahead of Victoria Volfard of Austria and Evie Leapfarth of the United States of America with one boat still to go. Look at the concentration on Jessica's face there as she went down the drop into the upstream gate two. Spotted the line to perfection. And, well, if it wasn't for those two touches, she would be sitting under 100 seconds and she almost certainly would be uh, a real, real challenge to beat. The only person that can take away the gold medal from Australia is on the start line now. It is Brazil's Ana Shatila, who is the fastest from the semi-finals. Goes off last in this final. And oh. was already a little bit in trouble. Oh. Hits the wall and, uh, well, that might actually help her to surf across to the upstream gate too, but the time is ticking away. Sure. Yeah, she, she was also winning the, the semi-final last week, I think, and... Uh, had trouble to, to make it through the uh, to make it to make a good final and I think she's having the same problem here. Well, uh, it's going to be a big ask to get into the podium from here, but wow. Anna Satila is capable of it. She's a World Championship bronze medalist back in 2017 at those World Championships, and we'll get an indication as to how much time she's lost on the top section in just a moment. There, 5.7 seconds. So. She's actually still in touch yeah. with a place on the podium. She can, she can do it, but a lot of energy lost. Wow. And here as well, a lot of energy and time lost, but who knows? She's well, she, so she, fast, she can make it anyway. She had to dig deep there to make it up to the upstream gate 10. And uh, well, the story I think that's emerging here is will Evie leave path on the right hand side of the screen as we're looking at it, take her first medal for the United States? Well, with a touch for Anna uh -huh. Satila, it's looking more likely that the 15 year old may well get it a medal. Is totally, yeah. Totally huge. Because that gap Woo! has grown to 10.23 seconds, is the deficit now. And Anna Satila is uh, now in the final stages of her run. Yeah, she's so the time to beat for a podium is 110.69. And, and she's outside of that. Avi made it. So Whoa. Avi Liebfarth at 15 years of age and only her second World Cup wins the bronze medal here. History is written today. Huh? I think it never happened. Well, in well any done. Category. Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, not in Mikhail Martikan. I know he won the Olympic Games at uh, 16. But uh, what, a, what a result there. Jessica Fox of Australia takes the win in this women's C1 competition. And then Victoria Volpart of Austria takes the silver medal. But the big news here is Evie Leapfarth of the United States of America at 15 years of age takes her first medal at senior level and just her second World Cup competition. So disappointment for Anna Shatila, who is uh, relegated down to fifth place and the Slovenians, well, they have to settle for fourth on this occasion. Yep. But uh, I think uh, she can, uh, Jack can be happy of what she did today. I think she, it might be her best result ever. And uh, I'm sure she really enjoyed racing here. Ah, and it was a good final. 
Yeah, I really so enjoyed it. So down at the finish, Jessica Fox. Well, first of all, Jessica, finally, uh, I know how frustrating this year has been for you. You're back on the top of the podium. Yeah, look, um, it's it's been a tougher start to the year for sure. And yesterday I was really upset and disappointed with my run and, and getting a 50-second penalty and not making that final. So today was about, yeah, those processes, getting into the final and then in the final trying to do a run that I was proud of. And, and um, yeah, I'm so happy with that and a bit emotional now because every... <laughs> what, what about this young girl? <laughs> oh, amazing, amazing. I think she's caught the eye of everyone on, on the circuit since... Her first international race in Australia, and this is only your what second World Cup? Yeah. And and a World Cup medal, so amazing. Well done. Evie, tell me what it means for you. You've, you've actually got a World Cup medal now. You're 15 years oh old. Oh my gosh, it feels really incredible. Um, I've been training for this since I was like 10, probably, and just to have it done in my second World Cup, like the first year that I'm able to be on the team, is just really incredible. Congratulations to both of you. Well done. Well, we've been watching uh, history made here in uh, Slovenia and it's the women's C1 final. Great to see Australia's Jessica Fox back on top of the podium. The World Cup winner of last year, four-time world champion as uh, she narrows in her focus on those Tokyo Olympic Games where, of course, the women's C1 makes its debut. But Evie Leapfarth, well, for the United States of America, what a story and a name to watch over the uh, coming months and coming years. So Victoria Volfart of Austria has the silver medal. And, uh, well, a pretty outstanding final, I thought. The uh, semi-final, there was a bit of a, a mix of performances. True, yeah. But I thought the uh, final really came alive, particularly those top five paddlers. Totally, totally. And uh, that was very interesting to see um, uh, the Slovenian uh, Alja doing a good run. And then we saw run going faster and faster. And that was very enjoyable. Yeah, and that run from uh, Australia's Jessica Fox, 99.06 seconds uh, more time. Yeah, it had two touches on that, but she'll go into the summer break a little bit uh, with added confidence as she starts to move into the Olympic qualification to type of, uh, sure, part sure. of the season. And as she said, uh, she wanted to do a run, uh, she was proud of, and that's exactly what we saw. She, she, gave, she gave herself 100%, and... Uh, that was very nice to see and I'm sure she really liked it. So the women C1, it's uh, gold goes to Australia, silver to Austria and bronze to the United States of America. And up in just a moment will be the men's K1 final. The top 10 boats from the semi-finals racing it out. And uh, well, it's a packed grandstand here because the civilians have eager in anticipation. But here are the results from the women's canoe final. Uh, Jessica Fox, Victoria Volfart, Evie Leapfarth. Brazil's Ana Satilas has to settle for fifth place after qualifying first in the semi finals. And uh, well, that puts Jessica Fox ahead in the standings of the overall ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup going into the final two races of the year. The next race will be in Magdeburg in Germany and then in Prague in the Czech Republic and Prague of course the World Cup final is double points but let's turn our attention now to the men's K1 it's the men's K1 final and uh, we've got an exciting final coming up Yuri Priskovic leading the World Cup standings after two runs Mikhail Pasiut and Hannes Eigner in the top three and well, Yuri Priskovic was the person on form in the semi-finals, qualifying through in first. And here is the start list. And what a start list we've got. A very nice one. <laughs> uh, we will really enjoy every, every guy paddling there. A uh, lot of di different styles and uh, a lot of very, very good boats. Same kind of a uh, few problems in the semi-finals, a few 50-second penalties and uh, a few touches. But uh, it took, well, precision for the top 10 paddlers. In fact, Yuri Priskovic, who was the fastest in the semi-final, did actually have a touch on his time. So we can expect something pretty special from him later on. We've got all three medalists from the Rio Olympic Games. We've got Joe Clark, Peter Kauser, and uh, Yuri Priskovic. We've got the world number one, Vip Prindis Racing. And now, of course, the winner from last weekend of the Bratz, the Bratislava World Cup, 
second race. Wow. It is Slovakia's Andrzej Malek to set the pace in this World Cup final. Very good start and uh, he jumped so well the first drop. And now uh, getting deep into the hole, it's not very fast, but he recovers pretty well. Yeah, solid start. Nothing, oh, nothing uh, light to get up, but he's stuck. And it's so hard if you get, you lose your speed in there. It's yeah. so hard to uh, get out and, and still get gate five. Yeah, I think he missed the paddle stroke. Something happened. Maybe he lost his hand from this shaft, and uh, it cost a lot, and he gets stuck because of this. I think. So the time uh, that was set in the semi-final, the fastest raw time was 81.58. But uh, I have to say that also had a two-second penalty. No one else got under that time of 83.58. So there is time in this course. It's just whether these athletes can uh, manage to find it in terms of risk-taking. Well, Andre Malek there has uh, picked up a two-second penalty on gate 14. Yeah, and unfortunately, because of these big mistakes uh, on gate four, uh, I think he will be out of the top uh, time today. Yeah, already actually, the uh, fastest time in the semi-final has gone past on the clock. So Andre Malek, the winner from last weekend in Bratislava in Slovakia, goes into first place. Obviously, it's the first one down, 91.03 seconds, and. Uh, I think that'll be the bottom half of this final, but who knows? Who knows, because uh, the course is very hard today. We saw in the semi-final a lot of boats uh, having uh, many troubles. So I think we can expect uh, some uh, 50 penalties today and some bad lines. I would agree with you there, Thomas. I think uh, the, the risk that these athletes have to take in order to... Uh, take the podium today will mean that sometimes they'll fall the wrong side of the uh, the margins and be awarded potentially 50 second penalties so there we see that's andre malek of slovakia his penalty on the downstream gate 14 and he sets the pace 9103 his total in this the 10 boat men's k1 final here perfect conditions 25 degrees not a cloud in sight and the crystal clear waters of the Sava River giving us some great pictures here. Yeah. And right now, the local Martin Stravoknik, we call him uh, Trivi for his uh, friends. And uh, he had a very good semi final. He's at home. I'm glad to have him uh, in this final. So let's watch Martin Stravoknik of Slovenia coming down the big drop here. Tartson and it's a perfect line into gate two Ooh. makes it look effortless wow that was huge well that would have given him real confidence now to attack this next section yeah, and that is well done he, he arrives on this option then by the bottom and it's very well done oh and he got the line sorted but then the water just slipped him back and it's a 50 second penalty and there's a good example of uh, he's done nothing really wrong but uh, in order to get the line, he had to commit to it, and That's he true. missed gate five. Yeah, just before get get five, get four. If you if you if you make your boat go in the, on the right uh, a bit too early, uh, it happened that uh, the current drops you very hard on the right side of the river, and you can't reach the gate. Yeah, so. It's, uh, it's all going a bit wrong now for Martin Srebotnik of Slovenia, but he's got the local support of, uh, well, most of them are probably Peter Kauser supporters, but uh, they, they would uh, definitely are supporting the other Slovenians in this competition. Yeah, it's still a very good experience for this guy, and uh, it will help him for the rest of the season, for sure. So, paddling out his run, and a total time of uh, 191.04 seconds. That includes 104 seconds of penalty. So it's actually a respectable time for Martin Srebotnik of Slovenia. But Andre Malek there in the shot, our race leader for Slovakia. And of course, the race winner last weekend in um, Bratislava for the second World Cup. There we see it. Just uh, not able to get close enough to gate five. Here's another angle of it. And uh, uh, quite clear from that angle that uh, 
a 50 second penalty and uh, it's not going to be a podium today for Martin Stravotnik of Slovenia. It's not a, a bad run for uh, Andrei Marek because uh, of the World Cup standing. He will probably stay close to the top because of this. Yeah, that's a good point, Thomas. Uh, clearly, not just down to these individual World Cups, but it's all about uh, scoring the points over the five race series, particularly in race five, the World Cup final in Prague, because there's double points up for grabs. So, next to start is uh, our single Italian representative in this uh, ten boat final, and it is Giovanni De Gennaro of Italy. Two time a World Cup winner, seventh at the Olympic Games in Rio. Very capable, very powerful paddler, probably the heaviest paddler in the final, but hugely powerful. Yeah, yeah, hugely powerful, and he completely nailed the first upstream. Well, that's where he wasn't Ooh. so. He lost a lot of time in the semi final on yeah. the top section, but that's he's uh, really found the time on this move here. Wow. And, it just fly uh, in one sense and in the other on that stopper and uh, the boat completely fly, that was huge. That is a huge Ooh. start for Giovanni Di Gennaro. He has absolutely delivered on the top section. Totally, and uh, the speed is huge. So fighting a little bit from 10 to 11. Yep. And uh, this is where he needs to keep his composure, keep the concentration into 14. Have a look at the spin, pretty well done. Yeah, so the way he doesn't help him so much, but he's so, so fast anyway. Wow, 8.14 seconds up on the race leader at the moment. Don't forget, there's still paddlers to come. But Giovanni Huge. Di Gennaro of Italy is setting the world alight here. He is really yeah. putting the marker down. Keeping and, the boat uh, flat on the last upstream, and he's pushing so hard, it's great. Well, into the race lead and 83.10 and Giovanni De Gennaro takes the lead for Italy and, well, notably, that is quicker than the fastest semi-finalist, albeit Yuri Preskovic did manage to go a quicker raw time. But Italy, well, looking in pole position and there Giovanni very much knows. He knows he's going to have a long wait now. Yeah, yeah, but huge, huge performance from him so hard to deliver such a run in the final and uh, we've seen uh, Italian winning in C1 and K1 uh, women and could be the same in K1 men. Well I have to say Thomas if that isn't on the podium then it really is going to be an exciting final. I think it will. Because I think yeah that's almost certainly going to be on the podium and uh, well it's going to be take something special to uh, knock him off the top spot there. So Giovanni De Gennaro leads for Italy with uh, three boats down in this 10 boat ICF Canoe Slalom World Cup final. We're live from Tartsen on the outskirts of Ljubljana in Slovenia. But when I, I'm looking at the start, uh, the start list, uh, so much big boys coming. So, might not be the goal, but uh, very good performance from uh, Giovanni. Next up for Great Britain, two British boats in this final. And the first up, Bradley Forbes Cryans now for Great Britain comes down the course. He took a bronze medal in 2016 on this wow. uh, course at the World Cup. And uh, again, finds the line into the first upstream gate too. Wow, that was, that was really nicely done, yeah. Always a bit, bit far left to what he would have liked, but it seems to have uh, been uh, okay for him, and he's gone for the move here. A little pushback on six. Yes. But he's kept his run alive. Yep. Ducking and diving a bit. That wasn't plan A, but uh, that was. Yeah, and a bit against the water uh, from uh, from now, but uh, we've seen in semi-finals uh, it happened the same to him, but... Uh, he stood strong and uh, made a very good run. Uh, the flying wow. Scotsman now takes on these downstream gates and uh, two and a half seconds down on De Gennaro, but uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that at this stage. Yeah, he's doing very well in this section. Yeah, and it, 
this was where, yeah, he's, he's narrowed it down. 1.2 seconds now. Bradley Forbes Cryons as he approaches the upstream gate 18. Will he sneak around this one? Oh. He tries to. It's a little bit uh, slower than he would have liked. Yeah, a bit too much aggressive, and he had to, to push his boat uh, in the other side in order to reach the gate. And here he pushed on the wall, but he clipped a little. It wasn't well, so fast. It's going to be outside of the time of Tijanaro of Italy into second place. 87.10. Bradley Forbes Cryons has given it his all here. And, uh, well, it just slipped away a little bit of those last couple of upstreams, and yeah. uh, such are the tight margins. Yeah, those last upstreams can be very costly. So there we see, that's uh, what a great recovery on the top, gate six to seven. He really had to be on his A-game to uh, get back into a position there. Ooh. That's the kind of magic. So this is where some of the time loss, he went for the tight move, tried to force the move and uh, just a little bit stickier than he would have liked. But there is an asterisk showing and I suspect the judges are looking at gate six at the moment. Yeah, probably, but for me it's fine. What I see, he recovered so, so well. Look at this. So provisionally, the results are Giovanni De Gennaro of Italy leading the way. Bradley Forbes Cryons of Great Britain in second place. Andre Malek of Slovakia in third. And uh, well, six boats still to go and six big names. Next up, it is Vit Prindis of the Czech Republic, the world number one. He uh, won the World Cup Series in 2017. He's uh, a world championship medalist he's won the european championships earlier on this season but the world cup hasn't gone quite his way in the first two rounds yeah. can he get on the podium on this occasion yeah the king of glide is uh, starting very well so what he knows wow i love that name that you give him there thomas the king of glide because that's a great description for vit wow. uh, great use of the upstream blade there <laughs> that's it going straight into the hole and uh, yeah well delivers the move on the, the top section and can breathe a sigh of relief as he now attacks it down through the next bit but he's down 2.67 down on Di Gennaro of Italy Giovanni was so strong on the top section and here he completely made the extreme one and here Giovanni was a bit slow so he can recover uh, some time here we saw that with Bradley Forbes clients, didn't we, that uh, Bradley was strong in this middle section. And uh, here he's even stronger. You're right, Vip Rindis is gliding and he's less than a second down now. So uh, it's all going to be down to these last couple of upstreams. Vip Rindis now into the upstream 18. Let's see how he goes out of this one. Pretty well done. And here, wow, that's a good one. Giovanni Di Gennaro they're watching eagerly but there's a two second penalty oh, now on Vip Prindis yeah. time so Di Gennaro is safe for now into second place though for Vip Prindis of the Czech Republic uh, 86.29 includes a two second penalty on gate 15 and uh, well there we have it in the middle there Giovanni Di Gennaro of Italy sitting in the gold medal position at this the halfway point in this World Cup final Vip Prindis is second for the Czech Republic. Bradley Forbes Cryans for Great Britain is in third. But I'm sure we'll snatch a word down at the finish line with our current race leader, Giovanni De Gennaro. Well, we're halfway through the final, Giovanni, you're first. Do you think that time's good enough? Uh, it might be good for a medal, but I'm, I'm, sure, I'm not sure for the win because I had a really good top part. But the second part, I was just a little stuck in some situation. And uh, yeah, the time they had in the first run, Giri had 82, 81. And so there is a gap that also other athletes can fill. What do you think of this course? Oh, I love that and it's 
one of my favorite course. We race here really often and uh, the drop is amazing. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, I love Slovenian people. We always train together, race together, selection, and yeah, it's a bit fun to be here. All right, keep your fingers crossed. Yeah, thanks. Well, there we have it. Giovanni Tijanaro leading after five boats down. Halfway point in this men's kayak final. Fitprindis in second. Bradley Forbes Crines in third place. And uh, well, the crowd are getting excited behind us in the grandstand because the next paddler down is the uh, well, the legend of the sport, Peter Kauza of Slovenia. And the Kauza army are out in force today supporting him. Yeah, the crowd is uh, warming up, uh, waiting for uh, the bus because uh, that's that's what it is here. He's he's the best, you know. And uh... and I think Peter Kauser, I think the whole uh, canoeing community were so pleased to see him get his silver medal in the Olympic Games. And he was uh, arguably the favourite in uh, Beijing. He was one of the favourites in London, and he had to wait until Rio before he got his Olympic medal to add to his uh, tally. That's true, and I'm really looking forward to see if uh, he managed to to throw a good run today in front of his home crowd. Well, I think in the semi-final, definitely at the bottom part of the course, he slowed down. I think Plenty. he's got more in the tank. So uh, here he is, Peter Kauser of Slovenia. The crowd are going wild, and he is in the final stages of his preparation yeah. world number two he's a two-time world champion two-time european champion olympic silver medalist he's won everything but he is always hungry for more yeah he's going now <laughs> the machine is on here he goes and so graceful peter Kauser, you Woo! just associate with uh, <laughs> how graceful he is but he's always pushing the lines yeah he has done it uh, maybe a thousand times the drop and he has it so well he was a bit low but it's no problem for him so wash through on the stopper three to four a little bit but uh, he's keeping his calm and he's delivered five six and seven that is the line he makes it look straight as he comes into the upstream gate eight wow when he's down on the split yeah, 3.1 seconds down um, so Whoa! That is, though, he must have trimmed it there. And this is where Giovanni was not quite as strong. Absolutely, yeah. And look at the gate number 10. He didn't cut the line. He totally used the stopper and it jumped. That was huge. Wow, it's close. Point one seven. <laughs> Peter Kauser wow. is starting to tighten the screw. And he's fast. He needs to nail that one. That's what he does. Boom. Oh. That's huge. He needs to, to kill this one as well. That's what he does. Peter Kauser now sprinting to the finish. 83.10 is the time to beat. He's going to be inside that. He is surely going to oh! take And just outside on the finish line, 83.15, just five one hundredths of a second. Wow. And this final is a lighting up. Giovanni Di Gennaro holds on for now for Italy. Peter Kauser goes into second place for Slovenia. Vit Prindis for the Czech Republic <laughs> in third. Can you imagine that you are three seconds uh, down at the first split and, and he completely smashed the last bottom uh, section and was so close. Well, that was a run. I'm getting my breath back. We've still got four boats to go in this uh, men's kayak final. And uh, the time is very, very fast already for the top two positions. Then there's a bit of a gap behind. Vit uh, Prindis currently sitting in third place for the Czech Republic. Peter Kauser, well, he was on fire there. And it looked like he was going to take the lead, but somewhere there, it just slipped away from him on those final few gates. Yeah, I think the three or four last stroke uh, at the, the bottom part, his boat came a bit to the left and a bit to the right, and that could be the last five cent of second. Well, there's the Kauser fans in the grandstand here, and uh, at the moment, Peter Kauser sitting in second place for Slovenia. 
So Jakub Grigor goes now for Slovakia. So didn't even make the semi-finals at his home race last weekend, but he's in the final here in Slovenia. And uh, well, he's a two-time under-23 world champion, a two-time junior world champion. Fifth, I think, at the Rio Olympic Games. So uh, you could expect some big things, but sticky on yeah. that run into four. This guy can be very, very fast, but uh, sometimes doesn't manage to finish his runs. But uh, he's starting very strong right now. Yeah, so certainly keeping his cool. The water's not quite been with him in the top section, but he's uh, kept his composure and he is in touch. 2.21 down, and we know that... Uh, wow, that's huge as well. Just like Peter did, he went straight to the string gate. That was huge, and here as well. Wow. But he's taken a touch wow. on gate nine. So uh, Jakob Grigar now will get an indication as to where he sits on the split time. Oh, wow, oh, a 50-second penalty yeah. awarded on 14. That was extremely risky to do a spin with uh, his right hand here. It was... So he was, he was actually closing the gap on yeah. the time of uh, Giovanni Di Gennaro of Italy, but he's not going to do that now. Jakob Grigar of Slovakia is going to be outside the medals on this occasion but he's scoring valuable world cup points and into wow. sixth place extremely fast time i think it's not a bad result for him he's building his confidence back and uh, pretty glad to see that so there's the top three at the moment giovanni de janeiro of italy in the first peter Kauser of slovenia in second vit Prindis of the czech republic in third Three boats to go in this the men's K1 final here in Tartsen in Slovenia. So, as the crowd anticipate and wait to see if they've got a medal in this men's K1 competition for Slovenia. Here we have the third from last boat to go in the final. It's the Olympic champion from Rio 2016 from Great Britain, 26-year-old Joseph Clark. So, third in the semi-finals. And uh, he'll be composing himself now as he launches his assault on this final. Don't forget, he won the first World Cup race of the season in Lee Valley on his home water. And, uh, wow, big hit on oh, the top part of the course yeah. and uh, just buried the nose. Totally, yes. Yeah, he, he went, uh, as it often happens, uh, a bit too much on the, on the left side and uh, hit the hole very hard. And Well, we'll see what that has done to his uh, time. He's certainly nice through five, six, and seven. He's got that line, but already he's outside of the time of Tijanaro, and uh, we're going to wait and see where that puts him. 5.7 down, it's a big ask, but uh, the podium is still in, I think, uh, in a, po a possibility at this stage. Yeah, he totally destroyed the beginning of the season, being always the fastest on every run, but today it will be pretty hard to do that uh, with a touch. So he's just taken a two-second penalty on the downstream 13. He's good through the downstream sequence, but now six seconds, the deficit. And uh, for Joe Clark, it's uh, not going to be a gold medal here today. Can he manage to do something special and get on the podium? Well, into the upstream gate wow. 19. He whips it round and he does get the exit, but uh, the time is slipping away. And I think the podium is slipping away on this occasion for Joe Clark of Great Britain and into fifth place. So it is still Giovanni De Gennaro leading for Italy. Peter Kauza of Slovenia in second. Vit Prindis of the Czech Republic in third place. And then it's Bradley Forbes Cryons for Great Britain, Joseph Clark for Great Britain. But it all started in that run in from gate one to two. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
it's pretty unusual to see him in such trouble in the beginning of a run. But, uh, you know, as you said, uh, this course doesn't respect so much your world ranking. Yeah, here we see the top part of the course. It'll be interesting. So, takes a big hit. The bow of the boat gets buried there. And then when it washes out, it's pointing downstream. Yeah, he did really well power, to recover. Yeah. Wow. So, with two boats still to go, then Giovanni De Gennaro of Italy. He knows he's got a medal, but he will have to wait and see what colour it is. And uh, there we are. Look at all those Peter Kauser t-shirts out in force, supporting the local so, two boats still to go. Next up, Antoine Nonet of Portugal. So, he was 12th in Lee Valley, 12th in Bratislava. He's made it into the final, and he made it into the final in style in the semi-final this morning. Can he find that rhythm, that fluidity that he showed this morning? That's great. Such a powerful guy. Always stay very strong in his boat, and uh, really enjoyable to see. Wow. Well, he's tight on four. Now this is the move that's going to just define the rest of his run. A little bit slow there, yeah. but he has kept it clean. Yeah, very slow, and uh, he will be very, very far from Gigi at the first bit. So 3.2 down. Well, we've seen Peter Kauser was that kind of margin down and uh, managed to get oh. close. But it's going to take something special. Uh -uh. Totally. Like Peter did. Yes, so this downstream offset sequence of gates is where Peter Kauser was so strong and uh, well Antoine is uh, certainly good reactive paddling but uh, two and a half seconds still the deficit as he's starting to run out of gates on this course to close that gap he needs to smash that one and fortunately doesn't and picks up a touch yeah so there touch on the, the upstream gate 18 oh. and now now on 19 and suddenly, a good run has started to fall apart. Such are the margins in this sport. And uh, Antoine Lonet of Portugal only into seventh place. So, Giovanni De Gennaro now knows it's a silver medal guaranteed. Slovenia know they've got a medal. And Vip Rindis holding on in third place for the Czech Republic. And it's the Czech, well, in fact, Czech Republic know they've got a third place. Yeah, that's true, um, yeah. Oh, they've got a medal anyway, because Yuri Priskovic for the Czech Republic is our final paddler down in this World Cup final. But it just shows Antoine Lone didn't do a lot wrong, but those couple of penalties at the bottom part of the course, and it slipped him from uh, being in contention with the podium to being in seventh place. Yep, but pretty cool result for him. He's having a good beginning of season, being always in top 15. And yeah, good consistency, and that'll build his uh, confidence ahead of the World Championships and Olympic qualification process uh, later on this season. September, the end of September, that is, in La Seo de Gel in Spain. But here we have the World Champion of 2015, the Olympic bronze medalist from Rio 2016. Uh, he's currently leading the World Cup standings, and he is uh, the World Cup champion for 2018. It's Yuri Priskovic of the Czech Republic, and uh, his run on the semi-finals was something special uh, yeah. because he uh, was the fastest, including a two-second penalty. And so. he's starting pretty well, a bit high right here, but it's no problem for him. Wow. Yeah. And he gets the exit on to... So he gets to spot the line through three to four. Whoa, that's huge. This is where he was so strong earlier on in the semi-finals, and he has delivered the top section. Surely this is going to get close to challenging the uh, time that Giovanni Di Gennaro set on the top section. Well, 1.96 down. Yeah, he's the closest we have seen so far. And uh, that's good on 10. This is where we need some special stuff from Yuri Briskovich on the downstream gates. Uh -huh. Really quite a lightweight paddler. His power to weight ratio is uh, 
It's really high, but he's just having to work into gate 14. But pretty slow here, and he's having some trouble right here. Well, the one wave didn't help him so much, and uh, oh, and here comes a touch, and yeah. probably a smile on Giovanni's face because he knows that. He'll be the winner today. Well, it looks like Italy are going to take their third gold medal of the uh, World Cup here in Tartson because uh, it is only into third place for Yuri oh. Priskovic of the Czech Republic. And uh, provisionally, Giovanni De Gennaro takes gold for Italy ahead of Peter Kauza of Slovenia and Yuri Priskovic of the Czech Republic. So what are your reflections on that, Thomas? Uh, I'm very impressed by uh, Yuri's performance with the touch again. He, he managed to get into the podium and with some bad lines in the, in the middle part of the course. And uh, <coughs> again, Italy first and again, Slovenia second. That's a good point. So overall in these, uh, this World Cup race, in the Olympic events, then yes, three gold medals to uh, Giovanni, well, so to Italy. And then uh, three silvers to Slovenia. Australia, Australia taking the other gold medal in the women's C1 event. And then uh, Ukraine. And then the Czech Republic pulling out some medals as well as the Slovakia yesterday on their bronze medals. So it's uh, been quite a uh, limited spread of medals in this World Cup, but uh, some different faces winning the medals. And I think that's really important at this stage in the season. Whoa. Results, Giovanni De Gennaro of Italy takes the gold medal, third gold for Italy out of four events. Peter Kauza of Slovenia is the popular silver medalist. Giovanni, hey, hello, here they are. This is the, the gold and the bronze medalist. Giovanni, you've broken the hearts of the Slovenian fans today, but I'm sure you don't mind. Uh, I mean, uh, Piero had a great recovery after a mistake and I think he was very, very fast in the second part, so he should be proud to be second. I know it's just five cents, so he will tell me for the rest of uh, his life, oh, that five cents. But I'm happy with my run, and I had a mistake as well, so I think it was a good run, and I got a little bit of lucky because Giri and Pedro could be faster than me. But yeah, still, it's okay. What an incredible weekend for Italian slalom paddling, though. Three gold medals in one weekend. Yeah, I think we got three gold in the past five years and then we get three gold in two days. So it's kind of amazing. It's good to we had selection here pretty often and yeah, I think we we had a good week and sometimes it's just about luck. Congratulations, well done. Thank you very much, thank you. Well, what a competition there and Yuri Preskovic takes this race lead in terms of the overall World Cup standings. Ahead of Peter Kauser, a bit of a gap emerging there into third place, Andre Malek. And an intriguing competition, I think, will unfold over the final uh, races, two races. So we've got uh, Mark Liberg in Germany, the last weekend in August. And then the first weekend in September will be in Prague in the Czech Republic for the World Cup final. Double points, of course. But... Uh, what we have seen is that, yes, Italy have dominated here. Three gold medals from four events. Australia taking the other gold. Slovenia, three silver medals from four events. Austria taking the other silver medal. And then the bronze medals shared out equally between Ukraine, Slovakia, Czech Republic, and the United States of America. So, uh, well, what are you going to be doing? Thomas, over the course of the next few weeks to prepare for those uh, last few World Cups and then, of course, the World Championships? Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to rest. I'll be going uh, for vacation. And then back to training uh, in La Seo, mainly, to prepare the World Championships and a bit in Prague and 
Yeah, try to to improve. Well, to be ready. Yeah. It's uh, yeah, Olympic qualification time in Spain at the end of September at the World Championships. And that's where the focus of our athletes is really from now on in the season. But they'll be using those last two World Cups in the 2019 ICF World Cup Series as valuable preparation and fine tuning ahead of those World Championships. Double points up for grabs in Prague. And of course, we'll bring that live to you over the course of the year. Uh, so end of August, we'll be back with Mark Leberg in Germany and uh, you can follow that live. But of course, we still will be back live this afternoon with the extreme slalom at 1500 hours Central European time. But for myself, Adi Maddock, and uh, a big thank you, Thomas Kirklin of the Swiss team. It's goodbye for now and we'll see you again.